hated it. I hated it, but here we go. I wrote a Disney, this is the only Disneyland poem I've ever written. I've never taken it to the stage. Hell, I don't even think I've shared it with friends, so I only want positive feedback on this one. <laughs> if you hated it or you have opinions about Disney, shut your mouth. <laughs> Sorry for the fun. I go to Disneyland instead of Walt Disney World because I believe in Walt. I go because Disneyland is the belief hope lives inside the impossible. That rebirth broken created genius, not madness. Walt Disney sprinted across tightropes of possibility because tiptoeing is something only nervous people do. He was obsessed, not anxious. Never looking down, always looking ahead, unbalanced blind faith and belief, unexpected only meant happy surprises, made him an easy target to trip. Down by friendly fire, betrayed by those he trusted most, the true wound wasn't from the attack, but from the realization someone felt he had turned his back on them. The added embarrassment was too much weight to carry. Perfect plans plummeted from upturned hands as his body slammed back to earth and shattered in the theme park. Walt Disney built Disneyland to control his folly. It is a self-contained, fantastical world created to keep his crazy safe. A secure environment built not for the public's benefit, but for his own private redemption. Walt made a happily ever after he could always count on. Who wouldn't want to do that if they could? I mean, he's just this guy, you know? In Florida, they only know the myths and legends. Soundbite concoctions gumbo together to give the perfect comfort of party and spice. An easy meal to call people to your porch with on summer nights that were meant to be lazy. Walt Disney World is bowls of heat that smears the edges of persona and reality. Painted up like rodeo clowns, Orlando thinks it's pretty. It's offensive, really. Garish idols and caricature, more of a witness description to a sketch artist rather than a photographic image. The Disney brand is identifiable, but there is nothing evident to prove that Walt is there. Optical illusions and second story foundations severed the roots to what mattered. It hurts my feelings that they almost got it right. Every detail is there. A fantastical, a fantastic replica kept alive by technology. They replaced the heartbeat with something inorganic. Pneumatic cylinders shock absorbed compliance. They replaced the man with the myth of their own creator. I went expecting a conversation, not pre-programmed answers, the effort to hide the special effects, as spectacular as those used to trick the emperor who needed new clothes. Walt is not the revealed fool strutting to his own pomp they hold in such high regard. You can't just tell people something is there and have them believe it. I know Walt's not there. Walt Disney World is latter-day fan fiction and I'm not going to waste my time visiting false prophets. I go to Disneyland instead of Disney World because I believe in Walt. Well, I don't actually, I'm not, and I don't actually hit women. Let me just have to say that, because inevitably somebody will come up to me and be like, so you hit women? No, not the point of the poem, please listen. Just because I look like this doesn't mean I'm mean, okay? Come on, you guys know, you guys that look like me know what I'm talking about. Hey, show me your mean bow, just do it. Oh! Oh! I can do a teacher look. Oh no, that's scary. Wait a minute, whoa, hey, stop, stop now. I can wait. <laughs> and if you use a teacher voice, people will stop whatever you're doing. You guys, hey! It starts with a rumble, growing thunder lodge at the base of my brain, still far off, but approaching fast. You can taste it before you can feel it. Heartbeat beating faster, hairs start to stand on end. Can you feel the electricity? I'll shock you if you touch me. The lightning is the inspiration, the antecedent, the impulsive warning of things to come and that moment of clarity when you really can see it all. The thunder is the release, the belly bellow holler, the righteousness of taking up space and the demand to be noticed, a want to rage, a want to form fists of granite and slam them into walls, breaking holes to see through, a want to propel objects away from me and watch them slide, broken to the floor, a want to pull at life's integrity and knot it around my fingers, strangling the last nerve reserved for the moments when I get out of hand. <laughs> They're giving me pills to calm down. I am high voltage, too hyper, take a pill. Feeling anxious, take a pill. Feeling aggressive, take up to three. <laughs> Doctor ordered, pharmacist supervised, honest to God, narcotics. Not necessarily the good stuff, but decent enough. 
I like to take them. Three, four, five, push it to six. Maybe you'll find seven is heaven, and the seven is heaven, we'll eight, nine, 10, 12, 126 take you. How much is too much? Is it when you finally relaxed enough that you quit fighting with your family? Or is it when you can't tell which of the three identical women standing in front of you you want to hit first? But by then, figuring it out seems like so much work, you just can't be bothered. How about passed out? I am full of heavy clouds. My heartbeat matches the rhythm of the storm. And when the sky is angry, I find comfort in that. It reminds me that I am not the only one to tantrum. spoken word poem I ever legit wrote. It was on the prompt, I should tell you. So I went home and I wrote, and this is what came out. And then all of a sudden people were like, oh, stop, 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 you're good. And then 10 years went by and I didn't really write another one this good. So it's my gift to you. It's my guts. I hope I remember. It's a part of me now, right? I had to be in the perfect position when the musical bear quit singing to me, so that when the Sandman appeared to take my picture, I would be safe and comfortable all night. Because once that picture was taken, I couldn't move my body anymore, because if I did, me and my picture wouldn't match up. And in case of emergency, the Sandman wouldn't know that I was one of his, and the bad dreams would come to claim me. I used to lay there listening to the music slow down, 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 down. Well, frantically flipping through the catalog in my head of all the officially recognized positions of sleep before finally settling on the one that looked best. On good nights, I would choose a few, try them all, see what felt best. And on bad nights, I would push the edge, daring myself to play chicken with the nocturnal image catcher. If caught in an unbearable position by the unexpected final note of my timekeeping bear, I quickly utilized what I call the reset position. The tried and true tummy down straight, then the head turn. I trusted the odds and figured there was no Sandman mean enough to take the picture of a kid stuck in that position. I always figured right, but sometimes I would force myself to remain in the reset position all night just to be reminded of how vulnerable I was to true suffering and I should be grateful I even know about the reset position. I also did it because I needed to practice sleeping on a bench. Well, in case I ever got stranded in a train station, even though it would be another 20 years before I even stepped foot into a train station, and that was for a beautifully planned, well-executed jaunt between Rhode Island and Vermont, from one uncle to the next. And in case of emergency, the farthest anyone would have to travel to retrieve us was four hours, reasonable, doable, and with no need of sleeping on a bench. For the train trip, I had the plan that in case of emergency, it was night and I was tired, I would forego the experience of true suffering by forcing myself to remain awake. I would drink coffee and smoke cigarettes and write haiku, and to be honest, that sounded kind of romantic, considering for as long as I can remember, my nights have been spent called running laps. <laughs> it's a simple ritual, really. You just check alarm. Radio on, radio off, check alarm. Check alarm. Check alarm, radio on, adjust volume, radio off, check alarm. Check alarm. Check alarm, radio on, adjust volume, light off, check alarm. Check alarm, then count. 1 to 100, 100 to 1, 2, 3, 4, then odds, 2, 3, 5, 6, 2, then odds, 2, 3, 5, 7, next evens, wait, wait, no, odds is 1, 3, 5, 7, I have to start that over because that's kind of me, so, and then count, 1 to 100, 100 to 1, 2, 3, 4, then odds, 1, 3, 5, 7, then evens, 2, 4, 6, 8, followed by Roman numerals, I, 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 V, 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 I, V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, 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 counting down, the minutes counting down, 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 the minutes counting down, until the music that now comes from a box instead of a bear stops. Hoping, praying, it happens on a zero or a five, because I'd hate to start that whole process over again. Because despite being safe in the arms of my lover in the bed we bought together, those bad dreams still come. Only now I'm in the bed I bought with my lover who I'm holding in my arms, and it makes it that much more important that in case of emergency, the Sandman knows where I am and is watching. Yes. <laughs> When we play trumpet, they're always like, 
squeeze your butt because if you play really hard, people's heart. Did you know that? It's like a trumpet thing. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe that's what's happening. I'm not tucking my butt. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, I think it's all right. It's fine. That's okay. What's going on here? Um. So I was challenged with raising a child, a girl child. It was hell. I made it through. Got a lot of poetry out of it. I'm gonna do one of those now. <laughs> My partner's daughter is running up steep city sidewalk towards home. Yellow school bus turning corner in background stride, thrown into awkward swing the lump of too heavy a backpack. Not the fault of her hippie school's experiential curriculum, but of her obsession with more Pierce's heroines, and it takes no less than 12 books to carry around her best and truest friends. With each leaping stride, she ages first grade. When the violent gate made her necklace, an ever-growing stack of hole punch index cards containing all her favorite words into almost a weapon. The next step second and third. When she had no teeth and got her first black eye and an unfortunate lesson about physics and bigger kids. Fourth, fifth, sixth, Seventh, like we didn't know that peanut butter was code word for the boys she liked. Eighth, ninth, when she told us that boys she liked was code word for the girls she's dating. She never had to come home to a house that didn't have somebody waiting. But rituals don't make a mother, and she reminded me of this every step of the way. Don't call me that. It's just for mommy and daddy. You did it on purpose. You killed my mice on purpose. Could you take some of the pictures and naked ladies off the walls? It's making my friends uncomfortable. It was just this school thing. I didn't think you'd be interested. So I made sure to never call her my daughter. Anyway, she's more like permanent scars etched into me that become so obvious that I forget that I wasn't always like this until I'm in a new conversation or situation or environment or community and I have to explain yet again where the marks came from. My story as fluid as my rearranged flesh. So I'll admit, it didn't really surprise me when she abruptly and dramatically left one Friday morning with only four months left of her senior year. No longer the lumping uphill towards our home, she crossed the street and left me waiting in an open door. What did surprise me is I didn't think it would hurt so much to finally close it. Latchkeyed into his non-existence for the first time in over a decade, with my very foundations shaking, I could hear myself bellowing, cause I paid for it, not a finger. The only two phrases my tumultuous mind can grasp and convey to my gaping mouth, but like those references, out of context, I mean nothing. Only I don't feel like nothing. I feel like a complex planet lost and spinning in a world of doubt and mistrust. A prehistoric wandering star waiting to unleash on those around me. A swirling tempest with atmospheres found to be quite turbulent. Um, every, <laughs> with, Atmosphere is found to be quite turbulent. I understand why everybody's afraid of the flood. So like a natural disaster, I unleash a torrential downpour of stay away from me and keep away from me. And it's not like we were a real family anyway. And I open the door only to slam it. And I open the door only to slam it. And I open the door only to slam it closed because rituals don't make a mother. I know this. She reminded me every step of the way. They only happen once in, in for well, 20 years, so this is the nice one. Um, wow, you guys, I'm like on my shit tonight. I feel good. I love Everett. I think that from now on, I will only come to Everett. I love Everett now. Fuck Seattle, Seattle, don't play with themselves. I don't like them anymore. Where are you? Oh, here he is. Okay, so I think this is very cute. I think it's short, but. So this is what I gave her on her last birthday, so a year after the leaving home one. You are the bee in my bonnet, the fly in my soup, the cat hair up my nose and the frog in my throat, and the pain of a stubbed toe at midnight. I might get angry or offended or frustrated or rendered speechless. I might really get hurt sometimes, but the passionate debates and trying new things and creating a tribe and experiencing moments of wonder meant colliding with unexpected objects worth the risk. You are my harshest critic, greatest challenge, proudest moment, and most crushing defeat. Raising you has been my favorite revolution. Uh, yeah. Yeah.
gentlemen because I knew you could smell a hunt like the old growth forest made up your bones and I had no intention of conquest. Sitting on the porch for hours just listening, you thought I couldn't talk. So I asked you to be my forever friend over healthy food yours and beer mine. You cried which was the perfect response and for just a short amount of time we were absolutely happy. And then your life married to a hippy-dippy therapy land bullshit man, and my life with a batshit crazy reformed Pentecostal woman intruded on our fantasy, but we still promised to be pinky, we still pinky promised to be best friends forever. And nobody thought it was weird that I went to all your chiropractic appointments or you to all my haircuts, because I mean, that's what best friends do, right? And sometime after you left your husband in the untying ceremony, whale song playing in the background, but sometime before I snuck out in the middle of the night, you bought me a hamburger on the day I got fired. And I said to you, when I go like this, it means get on me. And you realized that this was love, so I finally kissed you and then told you every reason why we wouldn't work out. You taught my finger trips to trace collarbones and I chewed on your shirt like the feet and I chewed on your shirt like the teething baby which I was. My nerves and bravado called to the mat when I asked in all earnestness, do you want to have sex with me? To which you replied yes as soon as possible. <laughs> it took me another two and a half months to make love to you. I was too shy to even open my eyes. And then you took my face in your hand and you said, look at me. My body is beautiful. And I opened my eyes and I said, oh shit, there's a naked lady in my bed. So I left the lights on that night and showed off to the dawn. And as the new day started to caress the horizon, you gently patted my head and said, that'll do, Butch, that'll do. And I was glad. I never do this one because it scares the hell out of me. But I love you and then I want to run off the stage as soon as, as, soon as okay, it's done, okay? Okay. Okay, hurry up, catch her. Yes! And if I stumble, you'll love me because you're Everett. Yeah, yeah I've never stumbled. Wow. 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 With its centuries old home, historic landmarks, diverse eateries, excellent shopping, fantastic diners, and festivals and festivities year-round, it's no wonder Aquidneck Island is now and forever will be the gem of New England. Only they never tell you about the red tide at first beach, a stretch of ocean that has such an abundance of algae, it stains the coastal waters to a dark red or reddish brown. The blooms create toxins that are harmful to both fish and human alike. Symptoms range from serious illness to discomfort. It's an uncomfortable feeling playing on the waves of the shores that saw the most human bodies sold into slavery. But to be surrounded by a horizon big enough to finally enfold me was like being wrapped in a breath of rest. And standing there, facing against the tide, stronger than my young patriot's heart, obsession with Paul Revere's ride, finishing summer school math packets, and the babysitter's club books, I was perfect. Despite being born to a body that bears its weight like a tree, bears the burden of its fruit. Embarrassed, they often left me planted somewhere to wait. I memorized Roman numerals and the feel of white slacks 
digging into hips, shamed on the porches and the backseat of cars, drive through dinner on lap and parking lot of fancier restaurant. It's hard to complain when your mouth's full of food and one should never complain. It's not so much the heat as the humidity. It's not so much the hate as the stupidity. An oppressive air covers the island. Generations of upper class expectations clam baked into backbones, even the beggars wear three-piece suits. Their neediness was as foreign to me as the color of their skin, but for those of us that were white and rich, four o'clock meant cocktails. At four o'clock, and the sugary sweet smell of a well-loved liquor cabinet, vodka martinis with two green olives, Heineken's poured without bone, experienced young hands dance with ice and glass. It was an honor to be allowed to serve, but it was no honor to be a servant, and I made them embarrassed, and so, Fuck me, I hate this poem. I love it, but that Keep going. But it was an honor to be allowed to serve. But it was no honor to be a servant. It was we were taught to be ashamed, ashamed, like the men of a clinic who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars designing a vacuum that could suck the red filth from its waters. It failed miserably. How do you remove the guilt of history from the earth herself when she just keeps bleeding? This is where I come from. So let me introduce you to First Beach and I'll promise to paint you a picture of perfect. But really, I can't justify the shame and the pretty. And the hot dog never smells as good as I remember. Sitting there in the stench of the red tide, picking toxins out of salt-stained skin. Ow! Ow. Ow. I just got that one up and I want to end on a good note, so I pretend, look right here. <laughs> you are all here to support the circus sucking, and now we're going to have some poetry. Yeah. Okay. Last one, I promise you that I'm out of here because I'm hot. Okay. But okay. I don't know what I Oh, do. by the way. <laughs> This lady right here, I saw the second time I had done an open mic night, the first time I was here. And um, uh, she won the Poetry Slam. I didn't know how good poetry was, and I was just an open micer. Where? Open mic rocks? Where? Yeah. Open mic rocks? Where? 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 Awkward and clumsy, ugly outcasts hooked up together out of necessity. It was homecoming and our chance to be normal. I wore a dress, him a tux. He gave me an elastic band that was covered in gaudy flowers. It was a corsage. It matched the color of my shoes. This is from the guy who brought me gloves when marching band practice rolled into foggy cold October nights and I gave him kisses white chocolate with almonds were his favorite. It seems like friends is good should be more than friends, right? I didn't know I wasn't supposed to make fun of the size of his penis or announce the whole school is obsession with grooming his leg hair. All I knew was I was tired of sitting alone on the couch at the parties while all the other girls fucked boys who could never love them well, as well as I could. So when someone says to me, oh my God, have you ever had a boyfriend? Yeah, sure, sometimes I'll think of that guy, who's now a bear living his happily ever after with his partner in Texas, and how we statistically prove that two negatives do not equal happiness or heterosexuality. For us, there was no fairy tale, because he preferred nuts with his kisses while I dreamed of saving the princess. Yeah. <laughs>